Okay, good morning everybody. Um, more like lunch time to be honest. <laughs> um, so I'm going to do a little bit more work on the bike today. Just dismantle a few things, get the seat off, get the rear guard off, get the front guard off. And um, pull the motor out as well. So, um, yeah, I'm just working on the, the seat at the moment. I'm just got the bolts out, not that there's not much to show when you're pulling a seat off, but yeah, the seat's coming off. So, um, you'll also have to excuse me, I don't have, um, I don't have my tripod uh, set up, because since I've been back skydiving, I've got my uh, camera mount fixed to the, um, fixed to the GoPro, so, um, yeah. I just haven't had a chance to get around to changing it again. So the seat's off. I'm going to make some new brackets for these. Um, these just whatever I had at the time. Um, as you can see, very rough and crude. But for a 15 year old that had no tools, you know, they've served their purpose over the last 30 years. So, yeah, oh, we'll, get, we'll get something nice put on there. Base is still nice and solid good solid base so um, yeah so that's the seat I'm going to try and angle this camera up a bit a bit better guys let's have a look here okay as I said in the past you know the quality of my videos are not great um, so yeah and yeah, we'll, we'll just get all matching bolts and things, you know, for the seats. Because at the moment, like I had standing up and bolt, the other side was a, um, yeah, the other side was just that. So, yeah. Right, right length, but um, just, yeah, just looks tacky, you know. So, I'll we'll work on getting all this stuff, uh, you know, all together. Um, just give me a, a, a second or two, I just gotta grab some spanners. Okie dokie, um, gotta take this uh, rear, rear fender off. I was actually looking on a few websites last night. Um, for rear fenders and although I couldn't find anything relating to like an 80 say 80 to 84 Honda XR I did find I did find some fenders um, I think from one of these uh, aftermarket motocross places um, they say they're the suit a Honda XR80, 80, 80, I think 80, sorry, 96 or 97 up to 2001. Now, I had a bit, bit closer look at that picture of that um, that XR that I'm, I'm trying to replicate that I showed you in the uh, first video. And I think the guy's actually gone with the same um, fenders because when I've gone in and had a look at um, a couple of other pictures of an 82XR the guards look a little bit similar to this front guard which very closely resembles a YZ80 um, fender so yeah I you know, I might end up, if I decide that I'm going to uh, put new vendors on this, rather than have to paint these white ones, and this, this back one, front one's really good. The back one's getting a little bit chalky. I know that you can you can scrape them with a, with a blade and you can, um, you know, use some very fine sandpaper and sand it all out and you know, undercoat it and da 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 The process is just really long and tedious. 
um, you know, get these, these guards already painted, just ready to bolt on. Um, they're 40, one's 40, nine dollars and the other one is fifty nine dollars and strangely enough i think it's the real one <laughs> which has less plastic in it it's actually the more expensive one so um but for a hundred bucks anything over twenty dollars is free delivery from this place as well so i'm figuring you know i'll wait i'm gonna wait they've got plenty of these things i'm gonna wait um i'm gonna see how good the rest of the bike comes up because, you know, this is no Mona Lisa, so um, I'm going to wait and see how the rest of the bike comes up. And if the bike starts to come up really good, and, you know, it's worth spending a hundred bucks on, um, on a set of, uh, set of fenders, then, then I will. Um, You know, I've got the new front number plate coming for it. And the side plates will look pretty good when they're all painted up. So, you know, um, might as well finish it off. You know, with something half decent, I guess. Um, but yeah, time will, time will tell, we'll see. Um, I have to be cautious or conscious of how much I spend on this old thing too because you can very easily just go and buy, buy, buy and then before you know it you could have bought a late model or later model bike. You could have bought like a, I don't know, 97, 98, 2000 model, you know, for a thousand bucks and I've seen, I've seen them on the eBay and Gumtree and all the rest of them for that price anyway. So. Um, yeah, I've, I've just got to be careful how much I spend. It's only, a, you know, no, my sister should like go out two or three times with me and then that'll be it. <laughs> and I'm stuck with this bike that I just spent hundreds and hundreds of dollars on and many, many hours on. So, um, yeah, I just, yeah, won't, won't spend too much. And, um, yeah, but we'll see how it comes up. Guys, this will give you an idea of how roughly this bike was put together. I've just taken the front fender off. And um, as you can see, there's four different types of bolts in there. we got like a, a hex key, a normal standard bolt, um, a Phillips head, and a, just a straight head. Um, yeah. <laughs> the things we do. Okay, guys, this is where we're at at the moment. Both the guards are off, the seat's off. I'm going to start pulling the engine out. Um, there's one major bolt here that goes through the back of the engine and underneath there's four bolts here. Now where those bolts screw into originally was where the foot pegs on the CT frame used to screw into. Um, but they just worked out to be really good engine mounting holes. And, as you can see there, I was talking yesterday about there being a hole in the original um, YZ80D frame for the, the the brake lever axle to come through. Um, so I've got my guide hole there, and it's the same on this side. I don't know if I can get up under there. It's really too dark. But yeah, I've already, that's already lined up. I've just got to get the shaft. Um, got to find a shaft. And... Um, yeah, just drill straight through there and, you know, job's half done. Um, yeah, fairly, fairly tacky. Looks like sometime in its life, this foot peg had actually busted off the, the D frame. Somebody welded it back on and then, then I ended up cutting it off the D frame to put onto this new subframe that I built. And, um... Yeah, they were my welding skills at the time. <laughs> um, it's held together, hasn't never broken, so yeah, I can clean that up a little bit. Things like this, um, you know, I had to sort of like knock this out of the way a little bit just so it wasn't hitting on the motor, but what I'll do is um, either one, I'll, I'll cut that straight off and round that so it looks nice. 
you know, there's no trace of a, a, a bolt having ever been through there. So yeah, there's lots of little things. This thing here I'll clean up on the frame. I need, as I said, I need to weld a, a pin on there with it, like a head on it, so I can slide a grommet over the top of it to hold the plate on. So there's a few little things I'm going to remove. Um, this was the modification for the frame. You can see it a little bit better with everything off it. Like as you can see, you know, we chopped, we chopped the tubes off here. Um, we didn't want to take it right back here because once we start removing it from here we start cutting into this gusset it starts to weaken it so we just used a bit of 25 mil square tubing um, we were lucky there was a cross brace in here already so it worked out good it actually um, it went up through the front we put some gussets in here to box it in each side um, to give it strength on the front and then we welded it to that that crossbar there so that's nice and solid that goes all the way up to the top of the frame there um, and even with this I can you know now I can sort of like round the corner off so it looks it looks a little bit more finished um, you know, these were the old tank mounts but the RM mounted up different um, where these had sort of like the um, cups on the frame the RM tank had the cups on the tank and um, so in order to get that to fit it was either you had to take them off the tank which was which I first attempted to do and that's how I ended up with the holes in the tank um, because yeah I had to break the spot welds so I ended up with holes in the tank and then the tank always sat a little bit higher in the front it never really sat down over the frame so it was still being restricted by these and it was sort of rubbing and that's probably where that little pinholes come from so yeah I took to this with the angle grinder um, to try and reduce the size of it but it was sort of hard with everything else on the bike so now that I've got the frame fully exposed I can actually just either um, drill out these two spot welds and that whole thing will come off and um, and that'll be done with so all good uh, what else as I was saying yesterday I'm gonna make up a nice little proper enclosed tray here so probably from about this point down so this point down right down to here and then up to here um, probably take it right to the top I'll make like a V, V type um, piece of plate, similar to what I've got sitting here. This was cut out of the old um, CT110 posty bike, um, but I'll, I'll fully inbox that so all this wiring and can you know condenser and whatever else is there, fuses and stuff, is pretty much all encased. Um, it's not having mud and water flicking up from the back wheel on it corroding it so we'll get all that get all that done um yeah so that's probably a bit better look at the shocker um after i paint stripped it last night it was getting pretty hard to see what i was doing in here last night it's getting dark it's getting dark early now because we're going into our autumn or our fall and uh yeah so you know that's that's just a just a quick one with some paint stripper and um a cloth and a wire brush and it's come up all right but once i i get these off dismantle the whole um triple tree and everything you know polish out all this this little bit of surface rust here and i'll what i'll do is i'll polish these and then i'll clear i'll get them really 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 shiny and um wipe them down and then I'll, i'm going to clear them so that they'll never ever fade again and I'll um, repaint the center hub I'm not going to dismantle the, the whole wheel yes I've got a bent spoke there whoopie do bike's 40 years old I'm not going to not going to dismantle the, the wheel the wheel's still turning the bearings are good in it it can stay um, but I'll, re, I'll, I'll mask everything up here around here I'll respray the hub any overspray I get onto the the spokes 
I'll just, um, you know, I can get that off. There's no issue there. What else? What else? What else? Um, probably for now, that's about it until I do some work. And, um, and then I'll pick the video up again and we'll keep rolling. Cheers. Okay guys, got all the bottom bolts out, got the nut off this side, so I'm just going to pimp punch, oh actually I don't even need to pimp punch it, it just fell out. <laughs> Here we go, so bolts out, just going to put that over here so we don't lose it. Uh, all the wi all the wiring's disconnected, um, so this engine should just come out first time in 30 years, so if it doesn't quite budge first time. Don't laugh. <laughs> ah. See, I knew there was always, there's always something, hey? What about the chain? <laughs> oh, I forgot the chain. Alright. Give me a minute, I'll get the sprocket off. Okay, guys, uh, sprocket's off, so I uh, wish me luck. <laughs> There we go. One CT110 engine out of a YZ80 frame. So um, we're getting very, we're getting very close to to getting this thing stripped down to almost nothing. Um, I shouldn't be a, um, and I probably, I'll probably live to regret what I'm about to say, but I can't understand how it takes people fucking years to to restore a bike. Honestly, like, I've built hot rods, you all know that. Um, and yeah, they can take some time. Definitely, they can take some time. But a bike, um, I, I can't see, I honestly can't see where, where the time is in it. Um, you know, this stuff just all unscrews and, and uh, it comes apart, you know? Like, I'm gonna paint strip all this frame today and, um, you know, that's all gonna be done. And then, you know, really I'd be ready to spray it by tomorrow, so I, I can't, I can't see where it takes people years and years to restore a bike. I could understand if it's something really rare, you know? Um, where you, you're trying to source every single original part for it, yes. But, you know, a, a lot of these old trail bikes, they're, they're being built up for just classic motocross. They're not, they're not being um, built up to be restored to put in a man cave and never, never started. Um, so they, you know, they do end up, um, putting aftermarket bits and pieces on it, like longer forks, you know? See a lot of that. Um, sorry guys, just gotta grab a screwdriver. Um, you know, they put, um, they put, air, um, you know, air shocks on the back. You know, they modify these things. So I really can't understand why it takes them so long to put a bike together, and it's, that's not coming from a novice, you know, building a car is a hell of a lot, it's a hell of a lot, it's a lot bigger than a bike, and, you know, I, I'm planning to have this thing done in a couple of weeks, all I'm doing is waiting on the bits and pieces, um, and, and the stuff that I'm waiting on, um, the furthest it's got to come from is Hong Kong, and that's only for a set of, um, new hand grips and a um, air cleaner pod. But everything else, you know, is, um, everything else is pretty right to go. So, yeah, it shouldn't take you that long. If your bike's pretty much intact, you should be able to pretty much nail it in a short amount of time. But like I said, I'll probably come to regret those words and you know, I know not everybody has, you know, a big budget. I don't have a big budget. As you know, you've seen some of my work. I do a lot of the stuff I can. 
myself. Um, I don't have all the latest um, gadgets, you know, Mustang two front ends, you know, I'll go with an old 1970s independent front suspension system. Um, tried and true, but you know, once it's all powder coated and new bushes, it looks it looks fantastic. So, um, yeah, it's, as I said, I'm not having a go at gal of people, but I just can't understand how how things do take as long as they take on bike restorations. It's just, yeah, to me, it's just a little bit um a little bit weird. <laughs> so, uh, and this is not the first bike I've restored. As I said, you know, I've had a YZ80E, and I restored that, and that, that, that came up beautiful. And I did that when I was in my teens. And I did that with the help of a friend, and um, who was a little bit older. Uh, but I still did the majority of the work myself. He helped me with um, a few things. He helped me with a few things that uh, that I didn't have tools um, available to do the work with. So, um, but pretty much all stripped down painting, new decals, all that. Did it all myself. It didn't take me very long at all, and I did it on a on a very small budget. So anyway, um, guys, I'm just going to keep stripping off little bits and pieces like this. Um, you know, maybe uh, drop the shocks and take the back wheel off. So that's all boring shit. So I'll I'll get back to um, the footage when uh, when I get a bit closer. Okay, guys. Um, as you can see, it's all stripped down. All parts are over there, and no issues. The only thing I discovered was that I was missing one bearing out of. On ball bearing out of the um, out of here, for the forks. Um, I've been attacking this with the angle grinder and punches and all sorts of stuff. Uh, these original mounts for the Yamaha, um, drilled them out, knocked off the uh, knocked off the uh, those keepers that hold the tank on. Because I've got to mount the um, uh, I've got to mount the uh, RM tank a different way, so done that on both sides. Just gonna put that in the bin now. Um, what else have I done? Um, spotted a few places where I need to weld weld up uh, a few bits and pieces, um, like here. Um, gonna run some welding there and weld, weld some welding there. You might ask why these are at different heights the reason being is that the bolts that hold the the head on they're actually staggered and that was why we had to do it in order to get into the bolts we needed to sort of slightly offset this so this one's a little lower this one's a little higher um, so all these gussets here I'm gonna go through and just like weld them again. Not that this thing will ever fall apart, but it's um it's just something that I want to do. Um, old brackets that didn't mean anything anymore. Clean them up. I needed a pin for that side. I found uh, one of these rivets. Um, it's actually it's steel. It looks like alloy, but it's not. It's steel and it's a pretty close match to what we have on this side these two pins i just got to cut it down a little bit and i've worked out i only need one on this side and i made a mark there so once i chop that off that'll get welded in there and the other attachment point is down there as i mentioned before um what else have i done oh, i just cleaned up the back a little bit plate here was a little bit longer than the frame so I've just smoothed that all out and make that look nice um, or as nice as it can look um, I'm now in the process of working out I, I can open this hole up to 15 mil because I've already it's already drilled just happened to be that piece of steel scrap steel that steel that I had was in the right spot 
So I've just got to widen that out a little bit. This side, I've got to take a bit of a punt. Might just get a really, really long drill bit if I could find one. Just going through this side and drilling through the back, creating my pilot hole, and then I'll just come in from that side and open it up to 15 mil. I only have a 12 mil drill bit, so um, I think I'll be using a die grinder uh, tip to uh, widen that a little bit, unless I can take it down to Mike's workshop if Mike's available, or I've got another friend, Julio. He might have a 15 mil, um, or he might be able to get one from work. So um, yeah, we'll get we'll get those holes drilled out for the for the um, the shaft for the brake brake lever. Uh, what else was I looking at? Ah, the foot pegs. The foot pegs. They sit a little bit obscure to each other. This one, having been broken in the past and welded up by the previous owner didn't weld it too straight so I'm going to do pretty much the same thing as I did with the exhaust I'm going to heat it up around here and I'm just going to pull the foot peg back it only needs to come back about an inch 25 mil it's not much and trust me sitting on the bike you don't even notice it but if I'm going to if I'm going to do this I'll do it properly um, what else did I do on the frame oh here I Try, I, I tried to clean this up a little bit. I mentioned in the other video that I had a crossbar there. So what I did is I basically, um, these came down a lot lower. I've lopped them off as high as I possibly can. And then here I took a bit of, there's like a bit of an angle that came out, a wedge shape. So I just continued on with a straight line. Took that triangular piece out of there. And with the tank on, Remember, I don't have the mounts for the front of the tank yet in place, but the tank, the tank bolts up there, the tank will sit on here, so the tank may sit a little bit higher, not much, just a couple of mil, but, you know, it'll, it'll hide a majority of what has been fabricated here in the front compared to what it was before because it was hanging down lower and you you saw it and it sort of did catch your eye so um yeah it should work out all right uh what else have i done well obviously as you can see the forks are off so all the triple trees there um i'll put all new bearings in that um i'm paint stripping the swing arms at the moment Found a little um, little split here in the um, never know what these are called. I call them like a stabilizer bar. Um, there's a split, so I got to weld that up. Um, and there's a split on the other side too. So um, yeah, that'll get fixed. Turns out that. <laughs> The nut for this was actually over tightened when I took the shockers off I couldn't even move the goddamn swing arms um, once I just backed the nut off like a fraction just a fraction these things were like floating beautifully so I'd say the bushes are still in really good condition um, with this exhaust pipe um, this must have been a really really good heat resistant paint because I've put four lots of stripper on this and it still shows signs of paint on it so I'm going to leave that as it is I can't do any more with it same with this as you can see it's like you know it's like it was painted 12 months ago and it's just faded a little bit managed to come off here a bit but you know around the end of the the baffle area there I just couldn't get the paint off. The paint just does not want to come off. So that's a good thing because that gives me a good undercoat, a good um, a base coat. Um, I'd love to be able to do something with that. You know, um, if I knew someone that slide hammer, I'd probably have a go at trying to pull that out, but I could end up damaging it. So, um, you know, what do you do? bit of a shame but um, it is what it is it's a bitzer bits of this bits of that 
so uh, so the next thing I'm yeah the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heat this up try and bend that back and um, and yeah just keep paint stripping I don't think there's anything else I've done guys but yeah I've got it pulled apart pretty quickly so um, yeah pretty happy at the moment as you, as you can see guys I'm heating this up so I can bend it you get a bit of an idea if you look across the bike how um, how bent this one is so I'm just going to keep heating it up and until it's red hot and then just bend it back okay that's the first strip of the, uh, the swing arms so all the whites come off and it got down to red and I know that in the in the 80s you know to paint your swing arms red was a very um, trendy thing to do and somebody's painted this but they've done a damn good job on it this was really this is really smooth and it's really thick too um, there are traces of the yellow yellow underneath but I thought that the uh, swing arms on the D's were black so I don't know where the yellows come from I'd say if someone's painted it red at a later stage of its life and I have spotted some black just under here which looks like it's the original black so I don't know what someone's tried to do with this whether they've tried like, like myself has tried to turn it into a Yamaha turn it into a um, a Suzuki turn it into God knows what um, but yeah it's great when the paint comes back you get to see all the um, all the markings on the swing arms I've ordered a new set of adjusters here for the back so they'll look nice and pretty you can now see here where that split is um, now that a bit of the paints off I've got something's hit it there so I've got to get a file on that and just file that down and yeah we'll, we'll get it happening so I'm gonna keep going guys and um, I'll show you a bit a bit later on where we're at okay I got pretty much everything stripped now uh, there's a, there's a few spots I've still got to get into um, but yeah I need to get the right tools to get in there and um, yeah so yeah it's come up good I'm happy um, all the swing arms swing arms are done um, so that, that's good and that little uh, stabilizer bar that got done as well so that's all good and um, yeah now that I got it to this stage I can just get the wire brush and just go around all the the weld joints and get out all the the stuff I can't get out with um, this wire brush because it's pretty cactus now um, yeah once I've done that as I said you know I'll um, I weld that pin on for the side cover and um, I'll clean up a couple of little welds here a couple at the front and and drill that hole out for the brake shaft to go through and that should pretty much be it um, pegs are pretty good now foot pegs pretty much in line um, hopefully I shouldn't have an issue with it I might just reinforce this one a little bit from underneath um, for some reason the, the sheet metal on this side seems to be a lot thinner than the, the sheet metal on that side these, these were cut directly off the frame, off the original frame, so they should be the same, but I don't know, they went just a lighter gauge steel on that side. That could be the reason why this broke in the first place. Um, not much else to tell, guys. I'm calling it a, a night. It's pretty late now, so um, we'll pick up on the video tomorrow.